Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, creativity, and life in a northern town. Feel free to leave comments on the show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com and let's keep the conversation going online. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. How is your January gone? Well, if you're like me, I'm a little bit glad that we are wrapping it up. I've been doing really, really well in instituting my new, not resolutions, but goals. I've been working out a little bit more and sticking to my eating plan. But the best habit that I developed that has managed my life and my stress And all of the projects that I juggle at once is my quilter's planner. Now, if you remember, I got this last month and I wanted to do a full review after I had been using it for almost a month. And we're at that point. Really and truly, the the way this is laid out is that you could put your entire life in the companion guide for meal planning and other lists and project ideas, but there is even enough space in the planner itself. It's spiral bound so it lies flat and you can fold it over. Every day I have gotten into a good habit of opening my planner up, looking at what I'm doing. Each day there's a hour by hour section where you can actually plan your day out hour by hour. Notes where you can make notes to yourself. So I wrote podcast notes. I have a little post-it note. You can probably hear me rubbing it on the planner. But I'm traveling week to week about things that are important to me, as well as a quilting to-do list. And my favorite thing that took me a little bit to learn is the habit tracker. The habit tracker is just six, seven, eight dots on a little column on the side of the page next to your whole week layout. And I couldn't figure out, well, what are these dots for? But at the bottom is a personal to-do list. And I'm really and truly social media and going to the Facebook group or Instagram. You can see how people were using these dots. I love my colored pencils. And so I use colored pencils. Each color corresponded with a habit I wanted to track. Yellow for exercise, purple for being mindful, meditating, and remember my year, the word of the year is being present. Orange is for so, blue is for long arm, 150 carbs a day is what my prescription is, so red is for trying to follow that. And this week I added a green one for dreaming. I wanted to take time to dream, meaning uh, brainstorming, dreaming about projects I want to do. There's a section each month has a beautiful um, section that has posters and motivational sayings. What I like the best is at the beginning of the planner is a yearly goal planning page. And I have one so far. There are places for three. And it's the word of the year that I wasn't going to pick. Remember that? But I did pick it. And I keep forgetting. What's my word of the year? I went back and I wrote present. What are my steps to achieve this goal? No multitasking, being open and flexible to others. Have a plan for each day so you're not frazzled. Savor each task. Be zen about all the little things. Be thankful for everything. Be gracious in all things. But most of all, cut out all of the negative things that aren't necessary. I don't know when I wrote that, uh, what day, but man, it's good. I I have to keep reminding myself. So I want to thank Quilter's Planner because I can tell you right now that Stephanie is the lady who designed this and she really, really engineered this well. There are sections in the back for B swaps. There's a section in the back for your sizes and measurements if you're a garment maker. Um, all kinds of things in reference materials galore quilting um, tips you know it's things like flying geese how to do flying geese estimators fabric estimators and my favorite part is 
the actual quilt planning pages where it's it's so good because um, if you're into goal setting and planning, there's pages with you know your ideas and clippings. Um, you can have a little graph paper box and sketch it out, and uh, it's just so wonderful. It's you really need to buy this and use it for at least a month. And if you're like me, the more you use it, the better it gets. So this week I thought we would talk about, you know, we got the goal setting. January was all about problem solving in my life. You know, things like, um, you know, the dryer broke. And I didn't have a lot of extra coins to go to the laundromat. And I took a marbling class and I remembered some of my friends had those little drying racks. So we've been <laughs> drying things on the rack. And the, the dryer is, uh, we got a new part. We're going to see if it works. We decided to take a gamble on a part. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to go buy a new one. The repairman estimate just to come look at it was more than the cost of buying a new dryer in my rural area. So, you know, you DIY it yourself and then if it doesn't work, you know what, just go buy a new one. So the last couple of weeks we've been uh, drying things the old fashioned way. It really brought back a lot of memories because I don't have any fabric softener. I've been drying my clothes with um, wool dryer balls and it's been great. The static has been good. The clothes have been not covered in stinky um, scents from dryer sheets. And <laughs> I hung everything up with towels on the drying rack. And I'm like, I knew they would be stiff, but it reminded me of when I was a kid. We hung everything out on the line. And if you ran out of downy, you got these cardboard feeling stiff towels. <laughs> hey, I want to say the good news is you don't need to buy an exfoliant if you're using towels without fabric softener that have been drying on a line or a rack. So anyway, that problem is almost done. And I had a lot of projects going and really and surely I've been doing a lot of being present, tracking it, organizing it, writing it down. The the heavy deadlines are done. February is going to be a month of recuperation, working more on my projects. So I started a half square triangle unit. It's about five inches the block. One big half square triangle. And I have been hoarding this cherry wood fabric from the AP AQS Grand Rapids trip. And I paired it with a light gray and then I ran out of the gray and I found an even lighter gray from the same company, same hue. And I mixed them all up. And now I miss, you know, I did one stitch at a time, just like my saying is my motto, one stitch, one block, one row at a time. And I completed the whole number of cherry wood squares that I had. Um, it was a grab bag, so they're like big chunky cutoff pieces that are roughly the same size. So I cut them up and I sewed them and now the rows are being assembled. Remember, this is the year of the mini. This is a little bit bigger than a mini quilt and it's probably going to be, you know, 50 by 55. But that's perfect. The project will be done and I'll be moving on to paper piecing, um, an old project. In fact, um, it's called Oceanfront and then the pattern is for sale in my pattern store. But this was featured in a magazine in 2013. And I thought what would be fun is remaking this project with some beautiful fabrics I have left over from Krista Watson's um, project in the fall. So I want to remake the beach towels of my oceanfront high-rise hotel. It's pretty modern and minimalist and use those bright towels as the pop of color with those modern marks fabrics. So I started one paper piece block and I really like paper piecing. I haven't done it in a long time and it's called foundation paper piecing for people now because we don't want to confuse it with English paper piecing. But that's where you print off a pattern 
I have electric quilts or six. I printed off on special thin paper piecing paper. And if I run out or I get lazy or make a mistake and print it on regular paper, it works. But I have tugged seams with regular um, printing paper, but it can, it, it will work in a pinch. So I printed a few of them off and I made the block a little bit smaller. And just for a sample, I'm going to start with seeing what it looks like in a three by three block layout and then post that later on in the month when I get it done. You know, my big challenge for January is also problem solving in my electric quilt program. For whatever reason, I can't, no matter I've called electric quilt, I've done everything in this universe to try to figure it out. But I can't export my paper piecing patterns in a PDF. Oh, sad trombone. Wah, wah, wah. So what do you do? I have been <laughs> I've really, really worked to be creative about this without having to spend money for the upgrade of the program, which is a great thing for me to do. Don't get me wrong, but I don't have $170 currently. And I'm not so sure that my laptop can handle much more than it does. But I found a free PDF maker, a cute PDF I know is out there for a lot of people who want a free um, program you can download. So I'm printing each block and I'm scanning them back in and I'm putting them into the free program. Oh yeah, there's a lot of steps to this, isn't there? And then the ba ba ba, I have a PDF. Only now I can't get Electric Quilt to put a title on each block. So that's my next thing. Trying to figure out how to make a title and my um, put my Creative Corner 3 on the pattern. You know, all the fun little things so that when they go up for a PDF download on this little store, that they're all polished and shining and ready to roll. So that's been my next project. Um, there's a lot of long arming that's been done, and I wanted to bring up a couple things that you might want to think about, because I spent a lot of time in January long arming quilts for a charity called Quilts for Care. I hate calling it a charity. These are blocks that were made for donation. Now, if you went to QuiltCon last year, Michael Miller Fabrics uh, had bundles of fabrics for people to take home and to make a block and then mail it back. Quilts for Cure was chosen to receive those blocks, and we have six, I believe, maybe seven, of these quilts that the Friends of Quilts for Cure assembled and they quilted them. Michael Miller Fabrics donated all of the sashing and backing. Uh, Orafil donated the thread. Hobbs Batting donated some of their absolutely gorgeous batting. And I got the quilt done and then I had another one, got that done, had the big problem solving of getting it shipped back because um, I live in a small rural town and I didn't have a FedEx store, but we got it worked out. FedEx is a great company. I'm just going to give a plug there. Um, we called the 1-800 number and it was fixed. So the quilts are where they need to go. So the thing is, if you're going to Pasadena to see QuiltCon this year, it's in mid-February. I wish I could go, but it's not in the schedule for this year. Please go to the booth. You're going to see um, Michael Miller Fabrics represented. I think you're going to see Daylight, probably representatives and things from, oh, you may not be here, but the snowplow truck just went by. Very noisy morning. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people who are part of this booth who have contributed to making this happen. And the person that I want you to really seek out and shake her hand is Holly Ann. Holly Ann is the president of Quilts for Cure, and she's going to be there. And you could see, you could shake her hand, and you can hear and see and find out how you can help. These quilts all go to children who have fought or are fighting cancer. They are beautiful quilts. You are not going to believe it. Each block is only about, I don't know, I think they're six inches or smaller. They're little gems. They're little works of art. And the quilts are just amazing. 
So please go look it up and see the people, see some faces, shake some hands of those who really have boots on the ground and are making things come together so children can have a quilt when they need that physical feeling of love and comfort during a time that can be very difficult. So what am I doing in February? We have the Me Projects, which I'm hoping to quilt one of mine. I'm working on Oceanfront, but I'm also doing something else that's going to kick off. I'm doing a blog hop. So watch for that on the blog. And I just want to give you a quick blurb about it because there's going to be a big update on the next podcast about um, Angela Walter's book called Free Motion Meanders, as well as about um, a new ruler set that she just came out with. I'm practicing with those and I am loving it because they are the size of my hand, the rulers, and they are amazing. So every Monday during the month of February, I'm doing a two free motion meanders. I'm going to talk about how it's presented in the book. And I just want you to know custom work is amazing. Custom quilting is divine. I adore it. But meanders is where I live. Most people want a meander on their quilt. Most people can do a meander at home if they have the confidence to do it. And I'm going to tell you that I love meanders. Meanders let the blocks sing. Meanders are practice, drawing, muscle memory. So we'll get into that. So if you're into meanders and you want to learn more about it, um, every Monday at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com, they will be listed. Um, so it's all free motion meandering. Also want to say I did a couple Facebook lives and I survived it. Um, they went okay and I think they will get better as time goes by. There's always a few little glitches you got to learn. Uh, but yeah, you know, one is uh, I didn't realize how much uh, Facebook's internet um, traffic can slow your Facebook live down and made it crash a couple times. But I'm learning. It's coming along. Well, this week I'm posing a question because I was thinking about it a lot in the last couple of weeks is what do you listen to when you are quilting and why? You know, I peace with podcasts, music with a little word, you know, not a whole lot though, because I get easily distracted. And remember, I'm going back to what I wrote in my quilters planner at the beginning of the month. I want to be present. If I have a television show running in the background, I can't concentrate on the sewing. I am not a person that can have a Netflix series running or movies running while, even if it's my favorite, Lord of the Rings, uh, I could have a football game running in the background and check in periodically with the score because I don't have to pay attention to the plot. But what my favorite way to quilt is, um, piecing wise, is to have like white noise or meditation music on. I even went so far as purchasing something um, that I read an article about saying that it was music that was written to cause your body to be relaxed and scientifically proven to be very, very calming. It's from Macaroni Union is the name of the group and it's called Weightless. Now the good news is if you're sewing, you don't have to download it. It's free on YouTube and you have a 10 hour version if you want to sew all day and quilt all day and have this running on your favorite um, player or headphones, it really, really is very relaxing and allows my mind to focus and focus and be present. Other things I like to listen to, there is a YouTube channel and you can find this on some other players or purchase it. It's called New, N-U, New Meditation Music. And what I like is I found, um, it's like a white noise background, reeky music, sometimes things you might hear in a spa or a massage place. But I like the ones that are uh, 
music for positive energy, um, raising positive vibes. I don't know, they have, um, they don't have flutes and they don't have as many bells and chimes as some in, I have ringing in my ears all the time. So I want things that don't um, compete with that sound. So those work really well for me. And I'll be honest, um, sometimes it's just better for me to quilt in silence. Um, I like to have background music when I'm working on the long arm because that machine can be pretty loud. So it's nice to have earphones in with something very, very quiet. Um, truly, I get so distracted. It can't be some of my favorite music with words. Occasionally, if it's a meander and I get into a rhythm with that meander and I don't have to do a lot of problem solving, I can listen to a podcast. Now, I love podcasts. But again, I can't have them running when I'm trying to work on the computer or if I am doing anything that requires problem solving, decision making, because I'll next thing I know, I'll be missing 10 minutes of the podcast. I can't even listen to audiobooks when I'm driving or my husband has a old time radio that he likes to listen to because if I start listening to that and if I'm a driver, I become so distracted from the story. I'm not paying attention to my driving. So you have to be aware that not everybody has a brain that will allow them to do those kinds of multitasking. And see, I've discovered in my age that I'm currently at that multitasking, you know, really from all of my research is not that we can do many things at once. It's that we can shift from multiple tasks that we're doing at once and work on them in micro increments, take a break, go to something else, work on it in a micro increment and go on to something else. You know, that's not good for me and it's beginning to cause me a lot of stress. So I'm really making 2018 the year of not attempting to multitask. So far, it's been very, very helpful because I completed so many things. I quilted five quilts, no, four and a half quilts for customers. I crocheted a little lap size granny stripe. I crocheted several um, chemo caps. I knitted one swatch. I'm doing a swatch a month to hoop up um, and put on a little mini wall. I also worked on a few other projects as well as, you know, this other usual things that I do with computer and, and designing. But when I thought about it, it was like, I can't believe I got that much done in little tiny 15 to 20 minute increments having a schedule and not multitasking. When I fell off the multitasking bandwagon this week, I caught myself trying to crochet and trying to text and trying to have a program on my lap and run a show on Netflix or YouTube. I have several people that I watch way more YouTube videos at, at night than I do shows. And I realized why it didn't work because I was not able to focus on any one thing and I was getting nothing done. So enough of that business. So that's what I like to listen to, which got my friends and I at work who are diehard quilters because I think um, quilters find each other. We got laughing because then it's like, well, what is some of the best conditions for quilting then? Um, I cannot have too much coffee. I cannot have too much alcohol. I can't be around too many people to do intensive piecing. And, you know, quilting is a solo project. Um, we were laughing about, we had a little sew-in with a group of our friends and I <laughs> took paper piecing. It was a complete disaster. So I worked on the half square triangles quilt for a little bit and I did most of the work at home because I couldn't concentrate. Visiting and chatting was great. I had the most wonderful time hanging out and eating lunch with everyone. I am not a person who can get anything done at a 
sew in or a retreat. I go because I want to be with the people and to make friendships. And maybe if you're going to a big one, there's a certain level of entertainment and speakers. Uh, what kind of clothes do I wear? Oh man, yoga pants, loose. It's got to be comfortable. It has, to, you know, there's a lot of things in, that goes into this. And I have to also block out the distractions. You know, I have my favorite pair of uh, what we call lucky quilting pants. They're really old, stretchy, worn out um, pants. And, you know, I'm going to get even give you some TMI here, but there's even certain um, undergarments that are nice and stretched out that are not constricting <laughs> that make it even better because I can concentrate and I'm not constantly reminded that I am uncomfortable. So be comfortable, people. Find your best time of day. Wear the clothes that make you feel comfortable and relaxed. Even if you go to a sew-in and as long as it's fit for public consumption, you know, I don't think, I think wearing stretchy pants is good. Um, put on the music that works best for you. Hey, try Macaroni Union's waitlist. You can listen on YouTube. Um, it, it may be too boring for you. I can't do that. A little sports in the background is okay for me, but that may not work for you. So find your time of day. What sets the most peaceful and stress-free environment? And if you're like me, I'm focusing on being present. I just want to look at my little present um, steps again to close because it really, really, really works trying for me to keep my balance because that's what quilting is all about for me is finding balance in my hectic work day no multitasking be open and flexible to others have a plan for each day so you're not frazzled Vicki savor each task and I'm going to add to that no matter how mundane be zen about all the little things and as I get older that means even doing dishes and laundry because there have been times when I couldn't do them. Be thankful for everything. Be gracious in all things. But most of all, cut out all the negative things that aren't necessary. As you go into this week, take the thoughts of quilting in a very, very positive and relaxing way with you. And quilt on, everyone.